Welcome to the Baby Mothers Podcast. I'm Nafisa Caseman, author, healer and life coach. And who are you, Missy? I'm Rachel Christie. I'm an actor and previous Miss England, previous model and all the previous things. <laughs> yeah, we lo- like, you got a lot going on. <laughs> I've got a lot going on. And I'm so looking forward to this podcast. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about baby fathers. The baby father. The baby fathers. How do you feel about that word? I don't like it. I think right. we had a discussion about this earlier, so I don't really like that word. I'm mm-hmm. going to say my, my son's or my child's dad. Same. Yeah. Same. That's exactly how I feel. But before we get into it, I feel like we should start with a quick fire round. So with this, what we're going to do is I'm just going to throw out like a sentence and you just give me like one word answers. Okay. Go on then. Does that make sense? Yes. It Are does. you ready? I'll try to answer with one word. Okay, cool. So <laughs> dating a man with kids or not? Mm. That's not a one answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. That no, is, that's complicated. I, I, I don't know. It depends. Do you know what? Before I was like, yeah, I need to date someone who has. Obviously, I'm, I'm going off now. <laughs> date a man with kids or no? <laughs> 50 50. It depends. Okay. It depends their situation. On their situation. It depends on their situation because I'm open. I've got a child. So right. for me, it's not, it's not a big deal. However, sometimes they've got the, the mum involved more mm-hmm. than what. They say it is, mm, mm-hmm. and I've been in that situation before. Same. So, okay, so it depends. That, it depends, 50-50. Okay, cool. Lots of sex after baby, or it's all about the baby? It's all about the baby. I, I mean, only because of the experience. <laughs> I mean, because some, some people, yeah, when they have, some mums, when they have a baby, they don't even want to touch the dad. It's something, I don't know what it is, but they don't even want to be near the dad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a situation. So for you, it's all about the baby? All about the baby. It's okay. a newborn baby. They need all your attention. They need all the food. They need all the love. Yes. <laughs> what about you? You need love too. Yeah, well. Mama I mean, needs love too. Made, so. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> More kids or no? Um, At this present time, no. Okay. Would you introduce your child to your new partner within the first three months or not? Yes, and do you know why? At first, I thought, no, I'm not going to do that because I need to know who this guy is. But you need to introduce the guy to your child to see how they are with your kid. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So I need to see how they interact, and if it's not good, then I can't be with you. I get that, and I and I agree as well. Like with my last relationship, he was quite like, oh, it's too early, and I was like, no, it's important. Like meet him now. Because if he doesn't like you, yeah. <laughs> then we're going to have to talk mm. about it. Okay, so describe your journey to becoming a mother. What was it like? Do you know what? I never thought I was going to ever have kids. I, think I was that sort of person who's very career-driven. You know, this is what I'm going to have at this age. You know, yeah. everything was age, age, age. Same. And you shouldn't really base your life on age because things can happen at any time. And I met someone who I didn't even like at first. It okay. just it was a thing that, you know, it... it became something and and we had a kid and I was I was ready for it at that time you know I was in a position where I was able to have a child okay and how old was you I was 22 okay like young right see I grew up and when I grew up I was very mature from from eight years old when my dad died I had to take a huge Mm. responsibility in my house Mm. and I got other siblings and um I I had to help my mum take care of them a lot so you know I, I had that mother role from a young age however I didn't want kids I didn't, I, not that I didn't want them, but I didn't see myself having kids so young. Yeah. Um, but when I did have my child, I was more than ready for him. He was planned, so. Okay. Yeah. So if you could describe your journey to motherhood in one word, what would that be? Oh, scary. Really? Scary. Because at the, when I knew I was obviously pregnant because I was trying to be pregnant. It sounds crazy because I'm only 22 at this point. Or, or, or before that, 21. So, um when it was happening, it was like, you know, it was fine, obviously. I mean, I'm trying to have a baby. So. <laughs> <laughs> but then when it came to the point of me actually about to give birth, I was like, oh, my God, this is for life. Mm-hmm. This is actually, it starts to dawn on you. Oh, my God, this is for life. What am I going to do this for? What if this, you know, what if he, the dad leaves or anything oh, like So that. all those questions you started start, coming through your head. It starts coming at a okay. point where it's too late. <laughs> so, Yeah. Okay. Not that it was, I was trying to not have the baby, but, um, you know. It's scary. You're right. It's scary. Yeah. I would say my word was unplanned. Unplanned. Yeah. Like, I feel like we was in two different situations or although our situations are very similar. Yeah. Especially now, like, you know, we've both got boys, single now, same age, but 
back then, I was like, I do not want to have kids. I remember literally, so I moved to America when I was 22. And I remember being on the airplane and my friend saying to me, like now you just graduated from university, first class degree, and I was moving to America. I was definitely in lust, like it was lust, you know, because my situation unraveled so far. So just to give you a little bit of background, I met my son's father the day before my 21st, 23rd birthday. Okay. So I'm Halloween baby. And then before my 24th birthday, I had my son. Uh, so right. okay. literally met him within three months I was pregnant. So oh, serious? Yeah. So and do you still have a good relationship with his dad? Um, no, we don't have a relationship okay. Is at he all. in the States? Or? He's still living in the States, yes. So, okay. So he's out there and my son hasn't seen him in three years because of COVID. <laughs> But, but other than that, do they have a good relationship? With it? Does he have a relationship with his son? He has a relationship with his son. And I definitely that's think... That's the most well, important thing. Sorry, yeah. And so that's tough, you know, when you go out there and you get pregnant and you always know that you're going back because I feel like our visions were very different. Yeah. You know, where, whereas he, I believe, thought that, okay, well, now you're pregnant. Well, um, how did I meet my son's dad? I mean, we were both in the industry at the right. same time. Is that the acting industry? No, so I was I was Miss England that time. Right, okay. And he was on Gladiators. And okay. I mean, I didn't watch the new Gladiators. I watched the old one. Yeah. With all the old. <laughs> I didn't so watch I didn't the new one. I who the hell he was. I was doing my own thing, you know. I okay. Was, I mean, I didn't even know who, I'd never heard of his name for in my life. Okay. I, I was doing my own thing at, at a good level. Right. So um, I remember I was with Caprice, um, the model Caprice. I don't know if you know her. No. She's uh, she's in the industry as well. She's a model. She's okay. From the States. I think she's from Canada, actually. I think. Don't quote me on that. We were doing, um, she had a fashion show mm-hmm. in Manchester. And obviously, well, I had one Miss England, so I was her model to model her, you know, stuff. Mm-hmm. And so she brought me with her. Um, I was modeling her stuff. Uh, we was in the VIP area. And this guy kept kind of lingering around. Okay. <laughs> so he had like, his eye on you. <laughs> I think he had his eye on anyone. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> anyone in that area. And um, so I was just hanging about there, you know, just minding my own business. I wasn't even thinking about guys because I'm a former athlete as well. I was on mm-hmm. my training. I was training six days just a week. Just focused. As, exactly. So focused. Training six days a week and also do my modeling at the same time. So I was just too busy to think about any guys. Right. Um, I had a boyfriend late. I mean, he was my first boyfriend. Okay. So, it, you know. <coughs> mm-hmm. um, but that's how it happened. He... Uh, we spoke briefly. Right. I can't remember. I remember he was doing some modeling, some like, uh, like uh, what's it called? Those me- those male swimsuit speedos, swimsuit, but speedos. That's oh, it. Stop. Tight, tight speedos. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Like, <laughs> and I wasn't attracted to him. You know, I think mm. a lot of girls uh, were o- all over him and stuff right. like that. But people still don't believe to this day that I wasn't attracted to him because he may be a lot of people's type. Mm. Um, but he wasn't for me. He was too big. You know, too muscly and all this type of stuff. At the time, it wasn't really... I was used to athletes who were, like, you know... Right. In proportion. I'm done. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but anyway, what happened was... I went to Thailand with my mum mm-hmm. after that day. And he had... I forgot all about this guy. And he had messaged me on Facebook whilst I was on holidays. My mum was like... Mm, like, she was kind of... You should always listen to your mum. That's all I'm going to say. I mean... Um, and I never listen, so... Um, so he was talking to me back and forth. Mm. And, you know, when I got back from Thailand with my mum, I ended up meeting him. Right. It was just a thing that developed mm-hmm. into something. And then we were together for about five years, about four and a half, five years. Okay. You know, in total. Right. Okay. Um, got you. On and off. There's a lot of crazy things that happened from the very beginning, actually. That should have been, you know, my final Checked. red flag. Right. But um, I kept going. I'm a family right. woman. And, you know, I believe in keeping family together. Okay. And and that was the majority. Keeping family life. together at the expe- at the expense at of the your expense own of my, emotions, exactly. mental health. Oh, really? Yeah. It got to a point where I don't know how much I'm going to say, mm-hmm. but it got to a point where I thought I can't do this anymore because mm. of my son. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not a good situation for him to be in. So I need to leave this situation. Right. I can do it on my own. I'm a very independent person. Right. Very independent woman. I've been independent from a, from a child, mm-hmm. you can say. Mm-hmm. So when I chose to leave, it was the right thing to do. It was at the right time because I knew I was never going to go back. Right. And, okay. yeah, but he hasn't got a good relationship. With his with our son, yeah. Son. Okay. Um, mm, it's a bit of a sticky situation. It's like 
tried to have a good relationship, but did he try? No, he didn't try. It was me trying still, I guess. Right, you okay. Know? So you feel like you forced, you forced no, it. Forced okay. Because I'm not going to force anyone to be, you know, a parent. I can't do it because yeah. it's, it's fake. And I, I, I can't put my child in your hands knowing that you don't really care about him. What? Okay. Do you know what I mean? So I can't, I, for me and my, you know, paranoia in that situation, I wouldn't mm. be able to do that. Okay. So I kind of tried to let it happen naturally. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't work. Okay, so how old was how old was your son when you two split up? For he good? was uh, for good, about three. Okay, three years old. Yeah. And so, did he come in occasionally, or was it just um, straight? Uh, okay. When I left, it's okay. like he was bitter. Right. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. and took it out on everything to do with raising him or anything like that. Um, yeah, just a very bitter. That's the only way I can explain it, really. And the thing is, yeah, you know, in that yeah. situation, what I wanted to get into as well, when you have um, a child or someone, as the woman, mm. if you speak up, if you say anything, you're the bitter one. You think? Yeah, 100%. Like, in whose eyes, though? In in anyone's eyes. As, a, as an outsider, especially if you're in the media and you've got people right, reading okay. stuff, and mm-hmm. you're looked at as a bitter one. Mm. If you don't know English Rose, you're looked at as a bitter person. Mm. But in actual fact, it's the other way around. But you you haven't got enough ground to stand on to say that. So is that what you feel happened to you? Everybody saw you yeah. as... And your, yours was quite a public... Public, split. yeah. Split, okay. And so what was your real feelings like after you okay. split? Build up. I'm not going to say someone who's abusing me. Mm. I'm not going to mm-hmm. do that. So mm. um, mentally abusive, however, however it was, um, I'm not going to stay with you when you're doing that to me because if you're affecting me, it's going to affect child definitely mm. I, I mean, agree nothing ever happened in front of him but yeah you know if i'm feeling down or yeah all of those emotions it affects your child mind. yeah definitely so i feel like a happy mom is a happy child you know and i feel like in my first book when i shared you know you can't stay just because of the kids yeah. you know a lot of people do but i don't yeah, I, I don't did. agree with it yeah i did i did up yeah. to a certain point and when i thought okay this is i, I woke up one day and i was like whoa this is really bad mm. i have to not do this anymore right okay i have to leave because if i don't i'm not any good of a parent strength yeah my hat's off to you it. girl my hat's off but to it you it was a build up it was a mm, build up and, definitely and i didn't answer any phone calls i didn't do anything and it and that was it and i've never looked back and i'm just i've never been more happy yeah and i think it's that thing because you know when you're in it sometimes it's so scary to it's take scary. that step right it's, it's yeah. so scary to to leave or to say, you know, I can't do this anymore because you don't know what's on the other side. Yeah. But I think just like you, no matter what, whether it was my son's father or other relationships, I'm like, I don't regret this. Like, I made the oh right decision. <laughs> and I'm so much better <laughs> after, you know. So but I learned. I learned from it. Because you said about red flags. And mm. I knew. And this is what I think so many of us do. There's so many red flags. But we keep it. going. We yeah. keep going. And then it's like here we are in this situation how did we get here and you kept going with my son's dad yeah. or just in general i would say with your son's father <clears throat> with the baby father the biggest red flag for me was there was a girl mm-hmm. and and at the time i wasn't really into this i was just going of the flow i mean it was a new world for me mm-hmm. i've never been in this situation person myself before so you know doing this there and that there and traveling up and down the country traveling places and then um i didn't care about him Mm. how somebody meeting someone would kind of like you know get to know someone like that okay so it was just a case of me actually going to meet him going out Mm -hmm. partying with not just us two together so it wasn't really that intense right the first maybe you know few months of yeah she's kind of laid back enjoying the journey right but in that period of time there's this girl messaging me on facebook calling me all the names under the sun. Okay. I don't know who you, who are you, sorry. Apparently right. she was in. A relationship with him. Yeah. Okay. Apparently. So I was like, okay, what's this? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so you brought it to him. Yeah, of course. Okay, what was I'm the like, response? I'm not into all of this type of stuff. <laughs> this so, is drama. This is new, what is this? Mm-hmm. Um, so. Wow. He basically denied it all. Okay. Knew the girl, but denied it. Mm-hmm. Uh, got his friends. Got his siblings to back it to back up the story to deny this girl. Okay, okay. So in the beginning, I'm like, okay, it's not real. Mm. I went out one day, came back home to his uh, his house. Mm-hmm. Um, all my stuff had been trashed. Huh. 
Yeah. Um, so she had gotten up, into the house. She broke into the flat. Okay, or wow. Or apartment or whatever it was. Um, emptied my makeup, wrote slag and bitch all over the wall. Oh, can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just like... <laughs> she wrote in all these profanities all over the wall with my makeup. It sounds like a movie, doesn't it? Yeah, like girl. Girl, I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> it's like Gone Girl. Honestly, my car was scratched. Wow. Yeah, so she so knew the car. She knew the car. So she and had been like her, watching yeah, you. Was, my car got scratched by multiple women. Okay. Multiple women. My car got scratched by multiple women. So this was a lot of red flag. First red flag. And I left. I was like, nah. Right. Not, okay. Okay. Got the tears. I got crying. And I was like, that's another red flag. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to believe it because I don't care that much. Mm-hmm. But then I did start to care because I started hanging around you more. And you started to I fall. started to love you. Yeah. And, when you weren't there, I was like, oh, I miss this person, you know? So that's how it happened. And that's the that's the scary part of it because you can meet someone who, who you're not attracted to, mm-hmm, but you mm-hmm. might form a friendship with that person and all of a sudden you're in a relationship and you don't even know how it happened. I would say my red flag, again, it was it was just the way he, he, tr- he wanted to make me jealous. Mm. And that for me was a bit strange. Like, okay. why are you going out of your way? So I remember... Him, he would always say, tell me about the women he would want to have sex with and things like that. And I remember, because we yeah. work, he worked in the airport as well. That's where I met him. And I remember I was at work and I, I was like standing around, you know, as we do as gate leads and working for Virgin Atlantic. I was in the airport and he was doing the baggage behind. So, you know, where you come to the counters, he was yeah. behind there. So we're literally facing each other. And then he was... So now we're dating and okay. right neck, right in front of me, he was like all over a colleague of mine, like whispering oh, in her oh. ear and like getting really close. And I was like, am I, am I, them hoops on. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like, this is like, why am I doing this? So literally within like, again, I walked away. Mm. So within like 24 hours, I had called him up, called him up and like, listen, I can't do this with you anymore. Like, this is not for me, you know? And I just kind of walked it away. There was a girl who was messaging you and then she yeah. kind of cr- trashed yep. your stuff. Tell me more on that story and how did you guys move forward after that? It was crazy because I was in a relationship with somebody who I didn't know had, I mean, had these personality flaws. So was this so a girlfriend? Like, just to be clear. Well, this is the thing. So apparently she was a girlfriend from her mouth. Right. But according to him and however many people, you know, it's about 10 people against one. Mm. So who are you going to believe? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You'll you believe him and his, and his siblings and his, you know, his, his family are telling me now mm. that this person's crazy mm. and they are acting crazy. So you're going to believe that, okay, this person is crazy. Right. Okay. It's only after the fact that I think that half of what she said was true. Okay. Um, not all of it, but half, because I don't know what crazy person does break into someone's home to trash an innocent person's stuff mm-hmm. just because you're jealous mm-hmm. and some of the things she was saying to me like oh i knew he was gonna fancy you when i saw you okay. in this you know place and blah this blah. wasn't a healthy it's just yeah. i was thinking why would you think that mm-hmm. i don't know who you are i don't know who the guy is at this point why would you th- see a stranger and say oh i know that my whoever boyfriend whoever he was at the time to her mm-hmm. is gonna fancy yeah. yeah that's what made me think okay he's telling the truth so um after that um which made it look even more, look even more real was that he got the police involved because it was a break in. Right. Okay. Um, even though he knew who it was, who done it, he reported her and everything. Um, so I thought, okay, he's telling the truth. Mm. Even though after that I did leave, um, and in that time I started to speak to someone else. Right. Okay. In that small space, space of time, because at that moment in time I did have a lot of guys on mm-hmm. my case because of the you, you, you hot girl situation <laughs> I was in, and it's like I was thrown into this place of like. This industry of where, I don't know, it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that made him want me more. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes Mm -hmm. when a guy sees you as someone, they're like, oh, yeah, I want... want Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, They want what they can't have. Yeah, exactly. Um, And so I wasn't in a relationship with somebody, but I was speaking to someone, you know, Mm -hmm. in hopes to get to that place. Okay. But because I'd already had a little bit of a history with, you know... Kind of pulled you back in. Yeah, it kind of reeled me back in. yeah. Trust and then um, after that, uh, I mean, I didn't hear any more of, of that girl. Did she go to prison? Of, sorry? Did she go to prison? No. <laughs> okay. No, I think uh, charges were dropped and all that type of stuff. 
Okay. Um, but she was still like slandering my name and all this type of stuff, putting all this stuff out there about me, even to this day, actually, wow. which is quite interesting to show her character because I think it was about a few months ago, even still writing things about me on Facebook. Wow. I mean, I don't even go on Facebook, but mm-hmm. to this day, <laughs> this girl wow. is still writing stuff about me. And people come forward and say, oh, she's doing this now, Rachel, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care about her. You know, I'm, I'm so past that point in my life, like, you know, to care about someone we didn't care about in the first place. But um, <clears throat> so after that, um, charges were dropped or whatever happened. And then more girls started to come forward after I had already been with him for a while then. <coughs> like telling telling you that they are with they him are, as well. I caught him in bed with someone. Okay, is this before yeah. you got pregnant? No, this is after. Okay. Not before, no, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's happened. It's after, yeah. Wow. So I caught him in bed with a girl naked and he tried to tell me you didn't sleep with it. This is how warped I was at the time. I'm t- <laughs> This That's is how crazy. warped I was at the time. This is how, um, you know, just brainwashed I was to wow. the abuse that I was going through. Mm-hmm. I was going through so much abuse. Um, but I was so brainwashed to the whole thing and, and I felt weak without him there. Really? Okay. Yeah, at some points because it's like I was a very strong person before mm-hmm. this relationship. Mm-hmm. Very confident, very strong. Like, I mean, nothing could to blow me over. I'm, I'm an athlete at this point, you know? Yeah. Um, and that takes a lot of... So you caught him in bed strong. with somebody mm. and then you just let that slide? No, I didn't. No, no. Okay. That took a lot of... I mean, did I get back with him? Yeah, I did. <laughs> See, let it slide. Um, <laughs> I feel like shit. No, listen. <laughs> it's it a happens, learning. It's you know? a learning experience. And at this point, I'm trying to keep family together. Mm. You know, I, there were so many things that happened and I was just trying to have my son have his dad and that wow. was my goal. And that is, as you said earlier, the, the, it's not the right thing to do. So literally in your... That, yeah. into further abuse because mm-hmm. um, he also knew like your goal was no matter what yeah, so no it's matter almost what, like no matter what you can do anything because yeah I've had I'm gonna be here to me, I've had a girl call me up um same girl wrote a whole spread about him in the papers by the way after this um she called me up and said yeah well he loves you but he's at my house you know so yeah we're gonna basically have to share him okay <laughs> so I've so got I need job. to know like how does one <laughs> start to move forward like how this did is, you start point, to I'm move forward mm-hmm. at this point i'm already done there's too it's just too much and at this point it, there's other things happening mm. um there's other things major things happening right and so these gals now are just it's just a, a stone in the ocean nothing um compared to what else is going on with this person okay um but it's just the cheek of it when i look back on it i laugh right because it's that's like, good wow. you can laugh I, I laugh at it because I was able to overcome something, you know, who try, someone who tried to make me so weak to the point where I thought, whoa, okay, who am I? Who mm-hmm, am I anymore? Mm-hmm. Um, but when you look back, you just think, no, you're the weak person. It's you that's weak. And you're trying to control me, trying to uh, abuse me or do whatever it is you're trying to do to me because you've got your own demons. Okay. you got so, you got major demons. Yeah. So how did you start to move yourself forward? It was a process. So... Obviously, I, I loved him at one point, of course, mm-hmm, <coughs> to mm-hmm. be able to stay that long anyway. And obviously, because of the child we have together, um, it was things that were happening and I could see things on repeat from what I saw growing up. And I thought, no, I don't want to have this life. Yeah. So I started to just bit by bit chip away from, you know, I disconnected myself from him like bit by bit. Um, and then one day something happened that was major. And after that day, I just woke up and I went, no. And that was it. It literally, I just cut him off. There was nothing right. in my heart for him anymore. It was just nothing there. So it took that big event. Yeah, it took that big event. It's always something that someone does. That's the right. last straw. Okay. Some people go past that last straw and they find themselves in a situation, you know, mm-hmm. um, that might be deadly to them. Mm-hmm. Deadly. But um, yeah, I found that piece in me that was willing to just drop everything for the sake of my son because he was who I was doing it for, really. Everything, doing everything for. Okay. Um, but, yeah, there was so many girls. <laughs> there was yeah. So, there was so many girls. <laughs> we don't know why. Like, you know, we can speculate. We can always say this is why I think it was done. But I feel like when my son was one, my son's father came over to the UK. I got a cough. <coughs> Excuse me. But I feel like after that, I knew that, no matter what we're trying to do, this is not going to work. 
right? Like, it's not going to work. I don't want this with you. So we need to go our separate ways. But I feel like we still both need to be parents. Like, both, not me. Like, I want you to be what you can to this child as well. And I feel like as soon as he went back, it was the phone call stopped. The Skype back, back then it was like Skype, the Skype call, yeah. school, everything stopped. And then I remember like three months later, he was like, listen, <laughs> you think you can do it by yourself? I'm not sending no money. I'm not going to call you any again. Like, I'm, I'm done. Like... So- with that situation, mm-hmm. is that like a good thing? Because he wants so badly to be involved with his kid's life. Is that what you would see it as or is it something else? A good thing until you stop being involved. Mm. I feel like, to me personally, if you want to be involved, you've got to look at the situation you're in mm. and you've got to do the best you can with that situation. Yeah. You know, So I don't feel like that was a good move, but I understand. I understand that everybody handles things differently. So... At the time, it was very hard because I'm like, I've got one year old. You're not sending any money. You're like, you're you're not gonna call anymore. Like, for, more for him, isn't it? Like, he wants to still see his dad, and and I'm the kind of woman like I want this child to have a father. Like, I want him to be there. So you're just shutting it down. I was like, crap. I'm all alone now, and it was real because you're over there in America, but you're still interacting and you're still sending packages and stuff. And now he's like, I'm done. And that was the first time I felt like, like it literally crushed me. And then he wasn't playing. Like he, he, cut blo- you. <laughs> he, cut yeah. he blocked me on WhatsApp. He blocked me on Facebook. Um, Is that because he couldn't have access the way he wanted to have access? Yeah. Like he was like, you know, well bring, let me have him. I'm like, oh. the baby is one. Like, I don't think that's a smart idea. He was like, well, I can do everything you can do minus breastfeed. I was like, but again. Well, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> now that you like moving forward, back in the day, you'd be like, no, you can't. I'm the mum. Mm-hmm. But dads have as much right as, as the woman, as the woman, as the, yeah. as the mum now. And that's fair. Um, and it is fine, yeah. But uh, but can a woman, you know, can, can a man do as much as a, as a woman with their kid? Man right. can show a, a boy how to be a man. I mean, my son's eleven now, and he's mature for his age. Um, and I can see, you know, him growing. He's he's growing, you know, in the areas and stuff like that. Obviously, he asks me questions that mm-hmm. I can answer him answer answer the questions, but mm-hmm. not how a, a guy could, you know, a, a man would answer the, or his dad would answer the question. So those types of things, I think it's really important that a son has a relationship with their dad if they are in the picture. Okay, so did he make a conscious decision? To not be like, did your son's father say, "Listen, I'm not gonna be here for him"? Um, he he had said that at one point, mm-hmm. um, and I think it was the fact that he had another kid recently. Okay, and obviously people must have been. How talking. did you feel about that? I don't care. Okay, cool. I don't care. <laughs> do you know, only thing, do you be if I can? Put, I mean, he, it's, it's really hard for people to to believe it. Even no, I I, I, I totally get it, but I'm so past that. I left. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a reason why I left. You weren't good for me or the or my child. Mm-hmm. I was. I've never said no to you being a dad. I never. Mm-hmm. I've always mm-hmm. encouraged mm-hmm. it. I will always encourage it Same. for as long as I live. Yeah. But um, I for me it's like oh my god. I I'm like oh my god. How is your child? You know. Right. How, I'm I'm doing things to make yeah. him to encourage him to be a dad. Do you understand? So, um, how is your situation? How are you? Mm-hmm. How, how mm-hmm. what's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, in hopes that he will then return that. Okay. For, for his. His child, you know, right. his son, his son. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So it, it, I don't know. Okay, so he's he never said it. He he said it once to you that he doesn't want to be. Yeah, he a said dad. It back in the day. But now he just like doesn't four. try. Yeah, <clears throat> he doesn't try. He doesn't. Tr- I mean, let's just give an example. Um, I mean, it sounds crazy me even saying this. I can't believe I'm going to share this, but um, he has a dog. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that has puppies had puppies okay it's around christmas time um messages me oh, i got a present to send okay you know send for my child um nice okay yeah that's great go and send it here's the address um so, so a dog it, came in the about, post it's about two months after christmas okay the christmas present about two months after christmas two three months after christmas okay where's the present oh my dog my dog's having puppies that's more important so you're telling me that a dog is more important than your child. Right, okay. So when he received the present, 
there was no I, I, I said to my son you know obviously you can say thank you you know of course for this um that's the right thing to do he's still biologically your dad I didn't say that part but you know in my head I'm thinking he's still biologically your dad he can say thank you no I don't want to okay I don't want to do that now He's starting to realise now. Mm. And I said to his dad, I said, he's getting older. Mm, mm, he's going to mm. start to realise that. That's a tough part. You know, as much as you try to paint me as the bad person, which I'm not, he's going to see that it's you. Um, and he's starting to see it. And he doesn't want to, he, my son doesn't want to talk to his dad anymore. Right, okay. So he that's his choice to, And now. I'm saying, you need to, like, try to have a, you know, talk to him like that. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. Because he's been there and he, he didn't feel... Mm. welcomed mm. in the way that he was you know wanting to be welcomed or, or ho- as a child welcomed by their dad who they don't see don't speak to barely um and he didn't feel welcomed the way he did and after that day and after this gift situation he was just he's just like no that's a that's tough that. one yeah that's my son saying that and i can't and and i'm happy now i'm in such a great place because before Good. it was like oh my god it gets you because it's like, oh, what's my my child's gonna grow up with no dad, and he's gonna feel like this, he's gonna feel like that. But then, now that he's at a visit in a situation, well, he's of age, thankfully mature enough to mm. understand. He's very emotionally intelligent as well, right? And he's that's come out of his mouth, so I'm so content, right? So okay, happy. okay. And I feel like obviously at some point, if your son's father does want to come into the picture that's going to be something that your son will be at an age where they can have that discussion yeah you know? i just feel like the older he gets the more he's gonna definitely see the situation and yeah. he won't respect him you don't get financial support from your son's father no. there's child support mm. have you taken him to csa um at one point i was like you know what we made we my son wasn't you know he was planned mm, by the way mm, so mm. it wasn't as if uh, we had a plan in place right. before he was born. They, okay. There was a plan. The plan was he was going to continue his career and I would not stop mine, but it would be on hold because obviously yeah. I'm, I'm the one that's pregnant, of course. Right. So he was to support me and support his family, you know, buy financially, house, do this, do whatever, right. you know, in that time. And he didn't follow through, follow through with, with that because of what he wanted to be, whoever he is. Okay. So when time went on, and I didn't ask him for nothing. Mm. Um, throughout the relationship, he didn't help me financially. Okay. I was still supporting myself and my son in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So, or our son even. Um, so after the f- I le- well, after I left, yeah, I didn't. Okay. You know? But what then stopped you from doing it? Well, what was the thought? At first, mm-hmm. I mean, at first I I didn't. And then I seen how he was flashing his money around. He <laughs> sent me email saying I just bought some That's girl. That's a burn. I just bought her uh, uh, this just Chanel bag or something, a Rolex watch. He sent you an email. Grand. Yeah, he sent me emails because I blocked him off everything. Okay. Yeah. So you're the next stage is emails. <laughs> Been for a lot, girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> so telling me how much, and I thought, okay, so you want to leave? I don't even know, but I just remember that part. Mm-hmm. That part hit me. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so you haven't, you're not, you didn't send your son a 50p birthday card mm-hmm. but on the same day. You're emailing me, telling me, or around the same day. Telling me how much you spent on somebody who you apparently didn't cheat on me with. Okay. I more than likely did because it was too quick to meet her the next day after I, I left. Okay. Um, but you're spending however much grands on her. So I thought, okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> That's not going to run. We're going to go. <laughs> so, okay, you want to do that? Okay, mm. well, you, you, you will pay for your son. Right. You will do Which that. Which is fair. It's fair. I didn't, I didn't um, have him on my own. He was planned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. So why am I yeah. now doing it on my own? Right. Not that I couldn't, but it was the principle of it all. So then I did proceed to go. Okay. And do it. And it's and we no woman should feel ever or any single parent should ever feel ashamed of doing that. Mm. It's not something mm. you should ever be ashamed of. Okay. Because some people are not financially stable enough um as a as a lone parent to mm-hmm. look after their child. And it's as a couple, easy. you may have been financially stable. Mm-hmm. And now you're in a predicament where you're not. Right. Because you're on your own. Okay. By no fault of your own. So you should never feel ashamed to go and, and chase that. How did that turn out then? Not good because <laughs> apparently uh, uh, he's got all these loops right. to avoid it. And that's another thing. So nothing came of that? Nothing. 
something so stupid yeah, like, CSA like says, seven pound a fortnight or something silly like that because this person's not working. I, meanwhile, you see him on big TV. <laughs> so, wow. But he's not working. He's not earning money. Hey. Luck. So yeah, again. You, so nothing now. So you just no nothing. I lone mean, parent. Um, it came to a point where we were amicable, and he did mm. something really small. I mean, to the point. I mean, it's not about being grateful. Sometimes it's just about I know what you've got. You know, I know that you can do more than that. Just to show that you're trying. Mm-hmm. And I, I meant I bought it up, and okay. as soon as he put it in, he took it out from one day to the next, just because I said that. What do you mean took it out? As in stopped it, stopped the payments. Okay. So um, it was only one or two. And I was like, are you, why are you, you know, just yeah. show, because it's going to him at the end of the day. He's got his accounts, whatever. You know, he's going to see that. Yeah. Wow. That's tough. Yeah. That is tough. But I, my hat's, again, my hat's up to you, you know. You just do it. You're doing <laughs> it. You're doing it. Well done. I feel like for me, definitely when my son's father decided that. And it's harder because I actually I guess I could figure it out how to go across the ocean and get mm. him to pay oh, right, child yeah. support. But for me, I got to a point where it's like, if you don't want to do it, like I'm not even gonna fight you on it. Yeah. Like if you was here in the UK, exactly. I would have probably just done the CSA route, but you're over there. I just don't have time. If you don't want to, I'm not going to force you. I just cannot be asked. But then I feel like 2000, like a year and a half later, he, I was in America and I had my son. He's like almost free. And I was like, listen, I'm here. Do you want to see your child? And he was like, yeah, let me come and collect him. I was like, you've been out of his life for almost two years. Mm. You can see him. You're not collecting him. Like, I'm not going to just leave you with yeah. him. But then we had a conversation. And I think from there, so once my son was free, he then came, basically came back into my son's life. And okay. since then, he has been pretty consistent in offering a monthly support okay and so yeah and I just I literally just I just leave it you know there's it's just if it comes it comes if it doesn't I'm not gonna argue with you like where is it I just because if you wanted to do it you're gonna do it and that's how I see it but obviously every single person's situation is different different. and I I went through that as well I didn't care I I mean I don't care now I wouldn't say I don't care yeah I mean I didn't know because I was doing it for so long on my own I I didn't care it was just the principle of it Mm. when you're saying certain things to me Mm. um I mean okay well if you're doing that then do this you know this is more important yeah and I'm trying to drill into somebody's head how important something is but they're just yeah. not getting it and they just don't want to get it we can't put our values onto other yeah, people you, you know and that's like that learned, how yeah. you see it they might not they ne- it's they unfortunate never, never will and never will yeah and i was told a long time ago by a male friend this person's not going to change rachel forget it forget it and they're right they're right yeah. and going through the situation that you've gone through and where you are today what would your biggest lesson be my biggest lesson man do you know what it took me. It took me about. It took me. Took me to the, near the end of a relationship to realize who I was with. And they do say it takes about what four or five years to actually know someone. I don't know. I've never been that far in a relationship. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that or about four and a half years roughly. So it was only towards the end of that who I realized who I was with, and I did not like that person. Mm. Um. So that taught me just to. I mean, what did it teach me though? I don't know if I've been taught anything apart from to if I see something that I don't feel comfortable with yeah. just knock it on the head yeah and you should always whenever you if you feel like something and that goes for men and women mm. you know because look at the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard situation that's another situation where he could have just knocked that on the head from the mm-hmm. first red flag mm-hmm. so it happens to men and women Definitely. Um, but you know I'm just talking from my experience as a yeah. woman because women fall, fall fall harder don't they yeah, I would say any red flag, just knock it on the head. Trust your intuition straight away. Don't even think. Don't don't doubt yourself. Just just know if that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that that's got to be it. Don't rely mm. on somebody else's opinion as well. Mm. Um, don't bring in outsiders into your relationship to to give you an opinion on what's mm. happening because they mm-hmm. don't know really mm-hmm. behind closed doors what what conversations you have. Yeah, how it's coming across in what way somebody's saying something they don't know. So, yeah, I would say if you Trust thought your something, just... I agree. No, I actually agree because when I was trying to wa- trying to walk away from my son's father, when I was trying to walk away <laughs> from my son's father, like everybody would be like, well, he's got money, like he works. Why are you walking away? Why are you leaving him? I'm like, 
there's so much more than this. So I had to trust myself because everybody else was like, well, he hasn't cheated yet. I'm like, <laughs> what? Cheated yet. Is that enough? So I totally understand. Like, I yeah. agree. Trust your intuition. I would say my biggest lesson is learning how to, to heal mm -hmm. because I feel like I've just met so many women as well that haven't been able to let yeah. go of the pain mm -hmm. and it hurts them, you know, and it hurt me for so many years until I started to learn how to actually forgive my son's father and take responsibility like you said you know it was me who was having unprotected sex so for me I feel like just learning how to heal after that situation yeah. changed the game and allowed me to I can talk about my past so freely because yeah. I'm, I'm free from it exactly it doesn't that's, that's affect me thing, anymore yeah. that's what I'm saying it's you like, know yeah I can I'm able to yeah on it now so you know I googled you Mm. I saw you. Oh, no, you didn't do that, did you? <laughs> I googled. Crap. Yeah, I googled you. You, you got a Wikipedia. I don't even have a Wikipedia. Forget that. Yeah, I got a Wikipedia. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but I saw that you was on Love Island. Yeah. Well, was it the first ever one? It was the a first, first ever one. Ever. It was revamped from ten years prior to that. Wow. Yeah. So there was a celebrity one. Okay. It was a celebrity show before, um, and then when they revamped it, ours was ours was a like a what's it called again? A pilot. Okay. Cool. It was supposed to be like a test run. To see how, this is what they said anyway, mm -hmm. um, to see how it was going to go. And it, it obviously kicked off, didn't it? Right. Two weeks after I left. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so you was on Love Island and this was before or after you had your child? Uh, after, so he was four when wow. it went on, went on, yeah. And it's crazy because sometimes I get messages, like sometimes guys try to talk to me on social medias. I mean, I'm not big on social medias. I've got a lot of things going on. But um, sometimes when I get messages and I ignore the person, not because I want to, it's just that, they're saying some stuff that I just, okay, mm -hmm. well, we're not going to speak, are we? And then because I've ignored them, they go on. I've had some guys say, oh, how can you go on Love Island and you've got a child? So okay. hold on a minute. Because you've got, got a child, you can't find love. Okay. You've got to be lonely all your life. So is this what the kind of majority of people were saying? Or what was your um, experience about? Two, but okay. I mean, those things kind of stick with you to, you know, to think, well, how, how can... Someone say something so stupid. Was you still with your child's father at that point? No, no. Okay, so you had split up. Over for about a year and up. Well, two okay. years, actually. Yeah. So, so how did he feel? Did I know you probably didn't mm -hmm. care at this point, yeah. but did he say anything like... We didn't speak. Okay, whatever so... he had to say was nothing. I mean, it, whatever. Even if he had tried to contact me, I wouldn't have even known. Right, so, okay. So, um, yeah, that was completely locked off. Okay. That was, I mean, what are you going to say to me? What... What can you what can you say? What do you do, girl? <laughs> <laughs> you okay, say? so he didn't really have a say in it. Nah. And even if you had something yeah. to say. Yeah. I was gonna say, so as a mum, I'm assuming like most women who go on Love Island don't have kids. That's a good question you asked because mm -hmm. at the time at the, when I was on this thing, mm -hmm. it was the first one. Right. And it was really difficult for me on that show as well, mm -hmm. because what you got to remember is in the industry, especially at that time, I'm there I'm there black girl do you understand in that in you that was the only black girl yeah and i was the only black okay. girl because i'm mixed race mm -hmm. my mom's white my dad's black mm -hmm. but in the industry you you are the black girl do you understand mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. matter and um in that situation it was hard it was difficult for me even even then like you know just to be me there because okay you know this type of situation it was they didn't want someone like me. The guys didn't want someone like me on that. Even though it might be hard for some people to believe that. Yeah. But it's in that situation, it doesn't matter. They don't, people in there don't like themselves, mm. more or less you. Mm -hmm, mm. So that was that. And I had a child. Right. So did you feel you like know? you were just cast out? I was just cast She's out. She's like, second, second week, was you the first person to get like shipped off? Um, there was some, shipped off the island. that went before me. <laughs> okay. Um, that had come in after me though. So I was the first from the original cast. Okay. From the main cast. Okay. Um, that had gone, yeah. Wow. Because I wasn't their type. Okay. Not because they didn't find me attractive, but because I was too brown for them. Okay. So just to put it out there. And that's then, exactly and what then it you was. had a kid on top of that. So and I just... had a child, yeah. Right. So I remember one of the guys actually in there saying, oh, you know, because um, I said, oh, because my, my ex, my son's dad used to say to me, you're never going to find anyone because you've got a kid. Wow. Yeah, he said to me all the time, oh, you're never going to find someone. You've got a child. No one wants you. Yeah, I mean, you're not even going to believe this. The girl who had trashed my stuff broke into my... She was on Love Island too? Her friend was on Love Island. <laughs> her friend was on Love on Island. On the same one? On the same one. <laughs> and afterwards she said to me, Rachel, you did this. And I said, no, I didn't do that. You know, whatever she had said. 
And um, she was like, oh, well, this person had said that to me. I said, mm. well, she's been saying a lot of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So my name was already slandered before I even went in there. Wow. Just from this one guy. <laughs> Okay, beautiful. Like, it's been really good talking to you. And And our time has come to an end so quickly. So I just want to say a massive thanks to the Baby Mothers podcast for allowing us to come on this platform. Do you have any final words? Yeah, thank you for letting us obviously come and share our experiences. And hopefully there's some people out there who um, can learn from it. Definitely. And start their healing process. It's important. Yeah. It's, it's necessary. And so talking of healing experience, I have a new book called The, S- the Gifting Goodbye, Seven Powerful Steps to Letting Go of Your Ex. And it's really about taking the seven steps which share grieving, you know, really reflecting on the relationship and taking responsibility for your part in the breakdown. We talk about disengaging with your ex and evolving forgiving and really upgrading your life so this book is now available on my website www.missnafisacaseman.com and i'm giving one lucky person the opportunity to win a copy so share your comments of how you found this podcast below and we are gonna give away live on instagram one copy it Um, could be you like comment and subscribe like (laughs) Say it. Thumbs up. (laughs) (laughs) And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast.